hello and welcome back to another episode of Rising Light Podcast. The podcast now is- recording. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. I did, I did not anticipate him to actually announce that. All right. Well, I'll start again. <laughs> That's fucking brilliant. Hello, hello, <laughs> hello. Welcome back to another episode of Rising Lights Podcast, the podcast that brings you, talks about, uh, brings you the rising light stars in the content creation space, talks about content creation, uh, like little tidbits to help you get started, little tidbits to help you keep your mind right if you feel like, you know, it's getting on top of you, whatever. Uh, I am your host, Intrepidus One, aka Trip, because most people can't say my fucking name. And uh, joining me, as always, is my co host, Enrage Kitsune, aka Kit. It just people can't always say my name. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hi, guys. As you could probably guess, hear a difference guess. from Kit, he is in his new place. I am, yes. Um, and the mic has got a bit of a different setup. Uh, might sound slightly more echoey. I'm yeah. trying to fix that at some point. Just need to get more stuff in this room. I mean, uh, it'll, it'll do. At least we can fucking yeah. get you. That's the point. Uh, that so, the yeah, point. two weeks ago, that was the reason that we cancelled the show. Was because Kit was in the process of moving shit, didn't have anything set up. Um, or if he did, it was going to be very very scuffed and (laughs) there was basically no point also the fact that i didn't remember until like two hours beforehand didn't help so (laughs) and then last week we were gonna do it and then i turned around a kit and says you know what we'll just get back on the normal fucking schedule the week later (laughs) because you know two weeks ago we should have done one but we didn't so this today would have been a normal day anyway. You would have just been getting episode thirty-eight instead of thirty-seven. But <clears throat> today's episode is episode thirty-seven. Uh, we are doing, you know, the usual, but we're going to be covering a little bit more just for the fact that we've been gone for four weeks instead of two. <clears throat> As per usual, the uh, song that we came into was. Made by the amazing part of the plan. Uh, That song that we came into wasn't I'm Coming Down, as you can see on the screen now if you're watching on YouTube or Twitch. Um, It was, in in fact, Frail, the name of their song. If you do exclamation point uh, P-O-T-P, as in, you know, the first letters of each part part of the plan, um, in my chat, you should get a link to their Spotify um, play, like playlist with all of their songs on called a discography. Uh, I'll do that right now for anybody that is lurking in the chat real quick. <coughs> also on there is a link to um, a clip from when we had Rafe, who's the guy in the middle of the screen right now, um, a.k.a. Cody. He was on the podcast because he streams over at Wraithbound uh, TV, I believe. I forget fucking what his thing is. Let me have a look. Yeah, he is there. Uh, if CA. I do exclamation point code, it comes up. Yep. Wraithbound CA. There you go. So he streams over on Wraithbound CA. If you want to go and check him out on Twitch, uh, look him up there. You, uh, Twitter is either Cody J. Weld- Wilden. Weldon. I can't pronounce that. Just then, I was having people having a go at people for just pronouncing my name. Uh, or if you want to follow his stream based Twitter, uh, is Rafe Bounce DA. But c- the Cody one is like his singer personal Twitter. So if you're interested in like shit the band's doing, he's more likely to say it on there. Uh, also, obviously, the band themselves have a uh, Twitter called POTP Band, I believe it is. So, um, yeah, go and follow them and check them out. They're fucking awesome dudes. Uh, but yeah, back to the, the like the clip. It was basically asking Rafe um, the band's view on people using their music. And long story short, they said, yeah, have at it. Uh, we love seeing what people come up with. 
and so there you go um dmca3 music to use if you want to use it it's the twitter account is potp underscore band oh there you go then i knew it was the the band like potp band i didn't know whether there was a, like an underscore or anything there's, there's an underscore Right. Uh, without oh, okay. so. But yeah, so as you see on screen right now, Cody's the one in the middle, and then you've got the rest of the band. The reason we use this is n and not Frail uh, was like we use Frail as the intro song, but we use this to show you guys that this is the band. Go and hang out, with, like check them out and shit. Um, still rumored in the works coming from. Cody himself, that these guys are going to do a Twitch channel at some point, so, um, and I think they have started a TikTok, I believe he said, um, so yeah. I'll have to check that out. Uh, go on, go on, a anywhere that you want to see them, search part of the plan, because as you can see on screen, if you're watching on YouTube or Twitch, uh, that's like their whole thing so there you go but to get into the topics i, I mentioned uh they they might be starting a twitch channel but um so there's gonna be reasons for them you know to have different taglines than me or Kit or anybody that's playing games because they might be in music or well, they might just be doing IRL stuff where it's filming them making music. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. Uh, there are going to be changes to the tag system, apparently. Yeah. Uh, I did like the le list little uh, addition to this. I saw this on Twitter the yesterday. Uh, ban, ban list being shareable. I like that idea. Yeah, so what I quite like about uh, this article is it kind of covers three topics in one. All right. Um, I did have the another link, another um, post specifically for the um, ban list sharing, um, but yeah. then obviously it was covered by this one. Which one? So uh, that's so we start with the tag system. Um, at the moment, um, we can use up to five tags. Um, like for example, the stream at the moment has ally controller in English. Yeah, and the only and reason that's controller basically... because of when I was playing Apex. <laughs> yeah, um, and you but you basically choose from a predefined list, and you can only have up to five. Um, after these changes, you will be able to do up to ten, and you can create custom tags, pending moderation. Right. So if there's something that you want to tag your stream, that isn't quite covered by the tags that are there, you can just type one in. Okay. That's cool. I thought you could already do that, to be honest. But... I, I thought you could as well, but apparently not. Maybe maybe the box you type into is literally just a search. Yeah, maybe. Uh, and, but more tags is, is good. Another feature is guest star? Yes. Now, this one, depending on how it works out, I'm not sure how it's going to work out, whether it would be useful or not, but we might actually be able to use this on the podcast. Which would um, allow streamers to host up to five other streamers on their channel. The tool that makes it easier and safe, easy, safe, and fun for creators to bring guests, whether it's other creators or viewers, on stream. This would be yeah. I, will be ideal for host streams, podcasts, talk shows, and platforms. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's, it says it right there. So if we were running the podcast through that, what we could do is you would stream here, right? You would host the stream. Yeah. And then I would stream, and you would bring me in as a guest star, and I would have my stream. We would both be on. Both, I believe. Or we would right. at least both be on yours. And then if we have, let's say, for example, we have uh, CJ come in. He could use his stream and we'd pull that in. I mean, and sounds we might be able to do 
we might be able to do something with overlays or whatever with the different charts from each of them. I'm not exactly sure how it will work. It's sort of. I mean, it'd be great if it, if it would be great if it was like something like what's in the Twitch uh, patch notes thing, but obviously like the cams are a little bit smaller, and then the chat was underneath. That'd be fucking brilliant. But yeah, again, um, that's something I I'm look I would look forward to looking seeing what they do with with it then. Um, and then the sharing bands. Sharing bands, yes. This, I think, is going to be huge for groups and organizations and teams. Yeah. And, and just, just people who t uh, commonly have mutual... Um, yeah. Like... Groups like uh, me and you and stuff like that. We quite often have the same people in the streams or... Uh, the kind of people who you would ban, I would also ban. Yeah. So, being able to see when someone comes in my chat that also, they've been it's banned, also... it's someone else's who's on my list. Yeah, it's also a case of and like. Why. It's also the case of like, let's say um, you used to ban someone uh, who, uh, you know, previously was like a active member. Of the community as a whole, like you, you can see why, like you said, and then it's like, oh right, well, I don't know. They decided that one day they're gonna get up and talk shit, right? Well, don't get to talk shit. <laughs> Bye, sort of thing. And you mm. just ex, 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 exercise essentially. But um, yeah, and I, and I can last... see this being. <gasps> Did you miss this one? There's a fourth one. This... Oh, Lastly... wait, that, one, no, that one's old. We talked about that. Oh, did we? Already. We did. We talked about that one four weeks ago. Oh, we've talked about so much shit I've forgotten. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this one anybody, was the thing... Anybody who's listening on the be... audio platforms, we're on about the channel switcher. Make it easier to cycle between streams. Yeah. But... So this one was where we said that they were going to kind of tweak the not necessarily the main page but the sort of like discovery pages for different categories oh, and things yeah. is that it would, it would rotate through different streams and there wouldn't be ads so like you would have a, a, like a 30 seconds or a minute on someone and then it'd rotate to someone else uh, and you wouldn't have the pre-rolls that would be if you click on the streams to go to check them out or whatever they'll just sort of go through them and you'll be able to figure out what they're like and if you want to go and watch them Well, speaking about switching channels, the easiest way to fucking mention about a raid. Yeah. Uh, apparently there's a positive, uh, positive reaction to a new raid feature in response to harassment. I will we'll go through the exact features in this at a moment. Um, but I always thought that the options that they had for disabling raids mm. were a bad idea because of how bland they were and how generic they were because it was basically just off anyone i follow which is fairly small and everyone yeah so, so this, now that, was, that is my up. so that is my issue whenever you like like, let's say you have it oh i just want it for people i follow is there going to be people out there that you don't follow that might take a look at your stream randomly and be like yo this guy seems cool or this lady seems cool i want to raid them and you know who knows you could be missing out on fucking 2k viewers like do you know what i mean you could miss out on like tw 20 not even, not even people two, like, like, like the day i hit my affiliate was because someone came and raided me yeah because um, but my point being guess, though is it's it's viewers um, out there that if, will if I not had, have known you. Yeah. So if I had these options on to disable raids for people, any people, and I obviously I I wasn't following at the time. So yeah. who knows whether I would even whether I would even still be going for affiliate now. You know, um, but having having some options for I like uh, I do like this about like the um 
minimum account age. That is yeah. a good idea. Yeah. So it, it, it doesn't, at first glance, it doesn't seem like it would do much because, you know, Although obviously a lot, of people, would, this a lot one... of people who are going to issue a raid are going to be people who have streamed and would have an old account anyway. Yeah. This one but... here, where it's like, they must also meet the following criteria. I kind yeah. of, I kind of dislike. I feel like this should be, um, like the top three, fine. Like this is fine in this category, but like the bottom three, any partner, any affiliate, affiliate, and my sub, I feel like should be um a default. Like gate, no, like they they cut through this, yeah. So somebody's hit an affiliate in like 30 days then and you have this tick then it should come it should come through if they've if they've been a th like an account that's been active for two weeks and it's an affiliate you know I mean? okay but yeah. only if you have this tick because then if somebody's going to be like oh well i could get a fucking hate raid of somebody who's botted their way to affiliate then you don't tick this the only thing think. is, if, if they've botted their way to affiliate, they're not going to have an account that's older than a week. Usually. It's true. And the last one I'm saying is, it like, if, if it's um, a subscriber's channel or any affiliate or any partner, then it wouldn't need the 30 days is what I'm saying. That's, I think these three at the bottom should be. That's my personal opinion, but... Oh, I see. So regardless of, regardless of account age, if they meet yeah. one of these three, let it through. It would. I suppose. But it would cut for as, it, as it is but... now, it's a lot better than it was. Yeah. Which is why I say, you know, streamers are positive about the new features. And I can see that a lot of the measures there do block out a lot of uh, typical hate raids and, and abusive messages and stuff that would come through with those. Because a lot of the time, these come through from accounts that are just that are basically bots. They just spin up an account, have all of the other nodes, follow it, subscribe, whatever, get it up, send the raid. Because raiding, you don't have to be anything to raid. Yeah. In fact, it's one of the best tools to raid people who around your size a similar size yeah to sort of know, bridge yeah that don't know you stream to sort of uh, like, say look hey i stream and then later down the line they're like oh i know this person streams so when they see your name in chat they're like oh you've been streaming recently how like opens a gate to where you can actually talk about your stream in somebody else's chat because they've yeah. basically given you permission by saying how was your stream like have you been streaming recently Blah, 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 blah. And then from that, anybody who's not following you that's in the chat might be like, oh, well, I'll go on. This person streams. All right, well, I'll go and follow. I mean, it's a passive promotion, but you've been given permission uh, without actually having to ask or without them actually going. Yeah. It's almost as if they're basically going, I'm giving you a shout out without doing a shout out command. Yeah. And then, and then usually. Well, that's, when, that's what it is. And then usually when somebody turns around and goes, Oh, you stream? Oh, let me uh, let me get a link. That's when the streamer will then go, all right, let me do a shout-out for him. And boom, you get the shout-out in chat. Do you know what I mean? Which obviously is, a, like, you shouldn't be doing raids or anything just for that. Like, you shouldn't be going, oh, I've got five viewers. Let me go and raid fucking Zerka or fucking Summit 1G, like, someone huge. It's got like anywhere from 10k upwards because one you're a drop in the fucking ocean for two nobody gives a shit about your five people coming into that ocean do you know what i mean like yeah like, you ain't the, gonna I, get nothing the, out of that other than somebody who's trying to get your name in front of like ten thousand people and not one of those ten thousand people are probably clicked you Unless yeah. they know you from like something the, else. The way, I can, the way I can see that going is like you, you do the raid, you go in with your five people, they see it, and if they acknowledge it, which they probably should, they don't have to necessarily shout you out for the raid, but you know, sort of acknowledge it, welcome people in, and then get yeah. on with whatever they were doing. 
Exactly. Whereas if you do it to people who you enjoy watching yourself that are around a similar size, then the likelihood is that they are going to be like, oh, cool. Like, because you, you, like I said, you enjoy watching them, the likelihood is you've probably talked in the chat before. Um, therefore, they know your name. <clears throat> like, ideal example, right? The only JD. Right, a, a JD even. I met him through Civics, talked to him in Civics' as chat. Um, Civics raided him once, so I like, oh, he, okay, he streams. Uh, so then I followed him, started hanging out with Adam, chilling, talking to him, blah, 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 blah. Right, and then one day I was finishing up. He had like two or three people watching him playing Apex. I had two or three people in here watching me play Apex. I was like, fuck it, I'm going to raid Adam. He's a chill as fuck dude. I enjoy his content. I enjoy like hanging out with him and talking to him and discussing like ways in which the game could be more balanced and like cool things that the game's done correct and, and things that they could change to make it better, etc. Like overall, you know, life of the game, balancing of the game and all that and essentially reviewing it, right? Like I enjoy having that back and forth conversation with him. So other people will probably enjoy that. So let me take people over there and boom. Then he was like, oh, Trev, you stream? Follow. And like literally pretty much every <laughs> single day, he comes in at least to say, like every time I'm streaming anyway, he comes in whenever he can and be like, yo, how's the games going? Yo, how are you doing? Like, what's happening? Like, do you know what I mean? And I'm the same. Like I'm in his chat fucking pretty much every time he's live. Like, Yo, what's going on? <laughs> how's it? How's the games and shit like that? Do you know what I mean? Like, because we're both of around the similar size, he's like Civic slightly better than me at the game. In I say slightly, probably a whole lot better than me at the game because they're both master players and I'm a diamond. But <sighs> I digress. Um, you know, we 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 know sort of what we want to do and help is it like i always said with this podcast and we always have said with this podcast here both of us is the rising tides raise all shit so there you go but i don't even know how to segue to this so i'm just gonna say like go straight to it um which is testing a charity fundraising tool Yes. So this one was kind of interesting because there are quite a few third party options for it. Um mm-hmm. like what would be called like tilt and buy and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um but Twitch is trial in the first part what kind of first party it all goes through uh, PayPal's giving fund. So to be a recipient charity through this tool, you have to be registered with that as well. Well mm-hmm. mo- quite a lot of charities are. But it would mean that there's one less thing to worry about integrating with your stream to start fundraising. Yeah. And I suppose that would make it easier as well to have two, like, PayPal links at some point. Like, oh, if you want to so- donate to the streamer, here it is. If you want to donate to this charity that they're doing, the charity uh, stream for, go to this link. Like, that yeah. kind of thing. And I, I, I imagine that... Um, Similar to at the moment where you've got like the uh, subscribe or gift to sub button, you would have the charity button there. Yeah. Once it's um, all set up. That would be cool as well. Oh, well, there it is in the article. The built in Twitch charity feature is designed to make it simplest for students to raise money for charity and easy for viewers to give with a designated donate to charity button. Yeah, that would be fucking amazing. Been able to run charity streams before the launch of the tool, but it's re- but is it required streamers to track down donations, manage multiple applications, and convert Twitch's virtual currency bit? Or the use of a third party tool. So instead of yeah. basically seeing who's donated to you, who's given you bits, who's subscribed during this period, and then click all that out, you either do that and then you send to the charity that amount, or you use Tiltify and all of the donations go through that. Which you can then do yeah. set up alerts and stuff for, um, 
What's going to be interesting is once this is all running, what do we have on the API for these donations? Would we be able to do integrations like Tiltify do with the um, alert systems and stuff straight from the Twitch API? What do you mean by that? Like what kind so, of, I don't. I haven't seen all, any of these. So, what kind of like integrations okay, are there? So, with with Tiltify, you can uh, basically uh, receive a link from them that you then put in to your um, OBS as a, as a browser source, and you'll have like a bar. So you'll have like your goal, and you'll have the amounts coming in, and you'll have like who recent donations and stuff on that yeah. bar. You can have like across the top or the bottom. With this being a first party feature, would we be able to have things in like Twitch bots and stuff that pull from the, the Twitch's own API when donations happen? Will we have, you know, how we've got the um, Twitch overlay thing? Like if I, go uh, my, yeah. if I go to my live scene thing real quick, how I've got. Because you've got one on yours, haven't you? With one of the goals on. Uh, Twitch. Uh, where is it? Yeah, there it is. Gold to... Oh, it's just appeared and disappeared. I uh, might have to refresh it. But, yeah, it's pop, it's pop, pop up again. It's oh, not... There's, a, there's that one. No? no I'm sure that's it underneath there. The this emote slots one. one. It's this one. Oh, you mean through a... Yeah, okay. Underneath the uh, where it says like followers and all that, yeah, that, that's fair enough. Anyway, like I have right now, last emote slots was my thing, and it's like two out of 50 clubs on the bar, right? What if we can do that with like the charity donation? Shit? So, like, it will say, like, next goal $50, for example, right? And then uh, in that bar, it will say, um, I don't know, dying hair pink at $50, and then it's like shows you the progress to how you are to that $50. Yeah, yeah. And then at that. the end of it, yeah. it comes up with, you know, because when you hit those goals that's on that Twitch thing, because it's part of the Twitch API and shit itself, there's like a whole big like celebration thing, right, in chat. Like, there's like a big party banner that comes up like a hype train. That says, look, we hit the target kind of thing. You know what I mean? So maybe they'll do something yeah. like that. And then it's like, all right, well, now good. I need to set a new one of those up. And then you say, all right, yeah. well, now I'm dyeing my, I don't know, my beard pink also at $75. Go on, let's go. And you get that. Like, you know what I mean? That that would be fucking cool. They could do something like that. Yeah. But, or even if you could set up, like, multiple goals. Obviously, it wouldn't be, like, the immediate thing. But, like, if you just set up... Like for this stream or whatever, I'm gonna have the goals at here, 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 oh here. Oh my here. god, that would be amazing. I we need we need that. We need that as a okay. just a pe like period thing anyway. Like, can yeah. we have so can like, we have mo with this goal goals. system? Can we have stretch goals implemented? Please, yeah, Twitch. So please, just... because I do not want it sat on my screen, which is nine times out of ten why I have it hidden that it says. Right, I'm trying to get to 50 subs and I've got two. Like, I'm as much as like I appreciate you and Ronin for being the two that are sub, <laughs> and I appreciate any subs that come through. The reason I want to get the 50 is so I have my last slot uh, being an affiliate, and it kind of looks stupid that I'm asking for that if I'm sat at two right now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, during September, I might be uh, like more inclined to put it on because the likelihood is they're gonna do that September thing again, where they reduce yeah. fucking yeah. subs by like half price or whatever. But it, as as it stands for the most part, I have it hidden because it's just it's, it's pointless. People, some people will see it and be like, "Oh, what an idiot!" kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? But anyway, speaking yeah, of just... like subs and payouts and shit, yeah, I guess, I guess like the, close, the closest I could get to fucking segueing from that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's close <laughs> enough. It's close <laughs> enough. 
uh, so right now, right out. now, for anybody who doesn't know, the minimum fresh out fresh hold for a payout for streamers on Twitch is a hundred dollars, which works out to about eighty pound most of the time, between eighty yeah. and eighty five. Depending Fluctuates on... a little bit based on exchange rates, but yeah. it's usually usually around that much. Um, um, that well, will soon as, be changing. Yeah, as you can see, if you're watching on YouTube or live with us on Twitch, they're slapping that in half. It's going down to fifty dollars, yeah. which is probably about forty. 40 so as the as the article says, um, at at present, the payment that we receive is from subscriptions and bits. Um and more. When they say and more, they mean like ad revenue and shit as well, which is pennies, not even pennies. Um, at a minimum of a hundred dollars. That's now being reduced to fifty dollars, meaning streamers receiving smaller amounts will they get their funds more frequently. So ideal example, me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> new threshold will be rolled out country by country, beginning with. Argentina, Italy, Japan, Spain, Mexico, and Taiwan on the 15th of July. Other countries will follow in, coming, in the coming months until November. Twitch anticipates that over 70,000 streamers will see more regular payouts once they're fully rolled out. Now, this won't really make much of a difference to partners who are averaging um say a thousand subs a month uh purely because a thousand subs even if they're getting the 50 50 split is going to be uh what like too far like 250 dollars 2500 dollars something like that yeah this, this this will mostly have an effect for anyone who is getting below what, 60 subs yeah. So the Something. point, my point being though, is yeah. like it's gonna have more of an effect on those that are smaller. Um, so this isn't really gonna affect those that are doing Twitch as a full time job. You know, it, it's their official job. It's gonna be more of those that are doing it on the side, earning a little bit extra money whilst and and doing a hobby that they enjoy whilst working a proper job. Uh, like Kit will be, uh, like I will be once I get a job. Um, because like then it allows them to get their payouts more frequently meaning they might be able to upgrade shit like I'm mm -hmm. building a new PC right so I might be able to next month if it's 50 for us um, I might be able to get I don't know my fucking fan for my CPU for my PC like and then I'm um, you know, moving my current gaming PC to be my streaming PC, meaning I can do more with the stream, meaning I can make the pro the quality of the content be better, therefore, you know, have more confidence in the content and stuff, and be a better streamer in general, um, and have it be of a quality to where people are probably going to enjoy it more. So... This kind of thing is great for, like I said, the little guy who's trying to come up. They're trying to basically, like I do, everything that they get from Twitch goes back into their setup somehow, some way, to make it so that the content could potentially be better. Meaning, they potentially, this, like they're reinvesting everything to try and make it to where they will they will eventually get to that point where they are able to do it full time uh, because the content you know is of a reasonable standard and a reasonable quality in the sense of what you guys see when you watch it on on the stream uh, uh because that's what people should always uh claim like to try be trying to do when they're small even if it's some some months, it might be jack. It might be bullshit. They might buy a new game, for example, because they wanted it. At the same time, you might stream that game, so it's an investment into your stream. You know what I mean? That's the way I look at it, anyway. 
Um, key things are like audio quality. You don't want to be going into a stream and the guy's talking like this uh, because he's talking through some sort of headset mic. <laughs> and it just sounds like shit. Do you know what I mean? You want something that's yeah. got a clean um, sound to it. Uh, that's why I said like kit might sound a bit scuffed and a little bit echoey, but it's purely down to the circumstance that he finds himself in being in a new place. Once he gets everything fucking sorted, I have no doubt in my mind, considering you've helped me and so has Fiend with like audio shit and stream shit in the past. That your fucking shit will be sounding fucking top notch. Um, oh, okay, I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't quite say top notch, but it's uh, <laughs> currently. It. It I mean, it will as sound as good as it can do, because bearing yeah. on, like, so obviously, like, if you've got a a mic that can not like go to a point where you sound like you're on a Shure F7B or whatever the fuck it's called. SM7B. That's it. Um. Then. You know, yeah, that's, that's so that's be a, it. It's a little bit out of me, budget. Yeah, but that, at the same time, there's like videos out there from like Harris Heller and that that. Yeah. Have... So there are things you can do. To oh, really here, here you go. Get these, get these uh, gates and stuff to make it sound good. I mean, that is one thing you should always do if you're like, is make sure your audio is good. Make sure when you are streaming, your, you know, the connection's great. So that you ain't choppy as fuck like ideal like ideal example my new pc that i'm building could easily stream and play a game at the same time i know this because my cousin's done it and it's basically the same as my cousin's pc that i'm building yeah um, that's, just what really in, me. that's one thing i'm really glad to be able to cut out completely is that because i'm basically here alone now. Uh, well, yeah. not right this second, I've got uh, your kite around the corner. But, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I don't have anywhere near as much background to cut out, so I don't need a gate. Yeah. I, I, I can just have it feeding through to the other filters all the time. Yeah. But like, am I, so my point is, with regards to like the quality of the actual stream itself as well, like forget the audio um, for a second. Is even though I my new PC when I build it is going to be able to handle streaming and playing the game at the same time. For one, why would I do that when I've got another PC that I can use as a stream yeah. PC? Because to, for two, the frame rates will be like more consistent. So so think about it. So you gotta think about it this way, right? Let's so then my cousin plays on one PC streams on one pc whenever we stream all right he does great with both yeah whenever he's playing just playing or streaming and playing but when he's just playing he will get probably like 160 plus uh frames in for example apex yeah Probably gets a whole lot more than that, but I'm just using that as an example. Um, he definitely gets more than that now, n knowing what he's just bought, like a month ago. But <laughs> we'll get onto that in a minute because I'm going to be talking like talk quickly about what I'm doing with my PC. Um, but then when he's streaming and playing the game, he'll probably get like 120, 130, maybe 140. Now. Some people might be like, oh, well, you know, it's not that big of a difference. Yeah, in the grand scheme of things, it's not that big of a difference. But if you're used to gaming at a 160 to 200 fucking, you know, FPS, then little nuances in your game are going to be slightly different in comparison to, like, 120 one this is why like people say to so i said to adam since i mentioned him earlier i said to him what i'm getting for my pc which i will say in a second what i'm getting uh and tell you what i've already got 
Um, I him what I've got and what I'm doing with regards to my my current gaming PC is going to be my stream PC. He turned around and said, "Holy fuck, you're going to be farming, right?" Because right now I play on the same FPS basically as a console, right? But I'm on PC and I'm using a controller. Yeah. So whereas console mm -hmm. players get 0.6 aim assist in Apex, I get 0.4. So I'm not getting as much magnetism for one. Then again, I'm playing at the same FPS as them, so I'm at a disadvantage when I'm not playing against a console player and I'm playing against a PC player. Uh, that's got like my cousin has like say two six uh one one hundred two one one sixty to two hundred. I am at a hell of a disadvantage because I'm seeing it refresh like one third of the the speed that they are seeing it. I have a one forty four hertz monitor that I'm not using the full potential of because my oh. PC can't handle that. Right. Okay. I was I was gonna say it kind of depends on the roof operator you monitor, but if you if you've got a one forty four, then yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah. So when it comes to me getting the new PC, let me just say I'm going to be using the one forty four because I could probably get a one sixty five or a two forty and be using it <laughs> <laughs> because currently sat under my desk right now. I have the case for it, the CPU in my and in my chest of drawers across the room, I've got the thermal paste. And the CPU that I've got sat in front of me under the desk, if anybody checked out my Twitter the other day, is a 5600X Ryzen 5. <laughs> so, there's quite a lot of power just by yourself. Uh, but then also my cousin... Uh, see, yeah, this is where I was going with that. Uh, he just bought something. My cousin oh, is yeah. selling me his 2060 Super because he's just bought a 3080. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So I'm going to have a MSI B550, I think it is, Gaming Plus motherboard with a M.2 SSD, 16 gig of. Corsair DDR4 3000, is it megahertz? I think it is. Uh, RAM. I'm going to have the 2060 Super, the Ryzen 5 5600X, and I've got it in an MSI Mag uh, 100R, I think it's called. ARG, A A ARGB case. And I'm going to have like a 750 power. 750 watt power supply as well in case I want to fucking upgrade shit. So, yeah, your boy's going to be overkilling a Apex. So I'm going to be able to probably, I'd probably be able to play on like the top graphic settings and still get 144. <laughs> and, um, I'm yeah, going to so... have Rig Envy. You are? I'm going to have Rig Envy. That's better than mine. <laughs> Uh, but... Although I am holding out because the next time I do any upgrades or anything is going to be when I finally get around to build my second machine. Yeah. Which I've got the CPU for. It's a much newer CPU, but it's about the same performance as the one I've got in now. I'm fine with that. My CPU is not. I hardly use it. Um, yeah, see, the reason but... I went with the 5600X is because I heard from Ash and my cousin that it was fucking great. Yeah. And then the fact that I have started playing 5M, you know, GTA RP, yeah. which is quite CPU intensive. So okay, yeah. If you if you play games that are CPU intensive, you will. It's a good idea for me to have a beast of a fucking oh. CPU. Yeah. Plus, plus the only other one I was going to go for was the one that my cousin used to have before he got his 5600X back in like March, February time. Um, which was a 3600X, and looking on Amazon, believe it or not, a 3600X is like two, three hundred quid, and the 5600X was 197. Yeah. And the other week it was 
the under we other week it was 205 and like a week before that it was like 250 all right but my point being it's about the same price for the 3600x as the 5600x so why would i go with the older one <laughs> fair enough i'd get the newer one yeah. because then it's gonna last longer yeah and, I, and I, it's gonna I, have I new tech looking. and shit in it you know i can make the use of I would be looking to get two GPUs, upgrade the one that I've got in this, and then I'd be looking to see what Arc is like. Mm. I'm really, I'm really excited for the Arc GPUs. Like I know they're not going to be top of the line performance for gaming and stuff, but for encoding, which you would be doing a lot of your stream, they're supposed yeah, to be really good for encoding. That would be an avenue. Hell, I might but even... it means that I'd have to wait until they're out, so <clears throat> I'd have to wait I, I've said, I've said to my, this is how badly I want to build this PC real quick, right? <laughs> um, so if anybody doesn't know, in the UK, we just got sent. If you're on like Universal Credit, which I am, because I'm oh, on right yeah. now, you got sent like a bonus thing recently to help with like the cost of living, and we do pretty good with regards to managing our money right so uh we was like fuck it we'll just spend it and on ourselves and treat ourselves right and so we was originally gonna do like i'll have the 200 for my uh cpu and the missus would have the like 125 or whatever that was left over to do with whatever the fuck she wanted but then yeah. She discussed it with her mum, and then it was like, right, well, we might as well use some of it for shopping and that. So it ended up basically being 100, 100, and then 125 was going to go on shop and shit for the house, right? right? Which, yeah. again, was fine. But at the same time, I was like, fuck, now I can't get my CPU. And because that's the most expensive thing on my list, I wanted it done and out of the way. Right? <laughs> and because I was like, not moaning but complaining about it so my miss is like well fuck well i don't know how i'm gonna get my cpu now like i'm literally gonna have to pray and hope i get a job pretty soon and get it fucking done and dusted and out of the way because otherwise i'm gonna be saving for the next like six months <coughs> it'd actually be four because uh i do 50 quid a month but the point being like she then turned around and went i know how long you've been waiting for this I know how long you've wanted a new PC. You've wanted a new one since you moved in here, which was before I got my current streaming PC. Um, it goes like, you can have my hundred. Get your streaming, uh, get your uh, CPU. So, yeah, needless to say, you'll be hearing me say a whole lot more how fucking amazing my fiance is. It sounds very really good. But the uh the the caveat to that is the one that we get in like the autumn, which is about October time, uh is going entirely on the kids' Christmas present. <laughs> Mrs. was basically, yeah, you get to keep my hundred, but I'm getting to keep the other three hundred and twenty something that we get next <laughs> next time and it's going entirely on Christmas presents. I was like, fuck, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did, I, I have tried, and I will continue to try until she tells me to go fuck myself, uh, to say if there's a part that I need for my PC by that point, that she can get it me as a Christmas present. <laughs> 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 so, I will keep people updated with how successful I am on that one. <laughs> I can't but, imagine you'd be very successful, but it's always worth a try. Exactly. Can't blame a guy for try. Um, <laughs> I mean, she said it was Christmas presents. That's a Christmas present. <laughs> 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 right, let's carry on before we run out of time. Uh, right, so we had some wins. This isn't really a win. This is this this went horribly wrong. Oh, fuck you know, this is... Wait, what? Yeah. So, it, it, I, I, I had a quick glance and the sort of pairs you look through that I do when I find articles like this. Um, 
Twitch seems to have very clearly banned the wrong person. All right. Um, they probably got spanned. Span banned. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so it, well, I, I imagine. I am. I imagine what happened here is that um, they called out these hateful bigots and told them to go and touch some grass, or however they phrased it, and the people who were in receipt of that message didn't like it and spam reported them. Yeah. And then that's the other thing was gone. That's how I well, refer to uh, yeah. something as a spam ban. Yeah. So this, the, the, the system's gone and gone, well, we've had a couple hundred thousand, I don't know how many reports in a short space of time, there must be something up. Let's get with it. Yeah. Wow, and they got suspended like, midstream, though. Yeah. So they were about as fast with this as they were with a guy going into Buffalo and shooting people. Well done, Twitch. <laughs> Fucking arsehole. And, and um, uh, moving on before I even before I even start a rant. <sighs> Twitch hot. Oh my god! <laughs> now he <laughs> can. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna... Kit, did you perfectly design news to make me go on a fucking run? Oh, my. anyway. I did, I did not. No, this was brilliant though because we've talked about we've talked about them in the past, the hot streams and stuff. Right. This one takes it a different direction, right? Go on. This one, for ninety eight percent of the stream, is nothing but an empty hot tub on camera. Oh yeah, I've seen this one. It appears in my fucking recommended like five times a fucking week. <laughs> yeah, so every now and then. And I remember somebody come I was watching on like, it. Adam! Something. I was watching and Adam he... and he turned around and went, Why the fuck is this jailer, Taylor person in my fucking uh, recommended for hot tubs and shit? I don't watch that content. So that's, that's when I realized, like, I was like, Fuck it, I'm gonna check out what the fuck is the reason she's in the recommended. I looked, seen an empty hot tub, I was like, why the fuck would anybody watch this? Like, I get people watching the actual hot tub streams. If you're a fucking lonely person and you want to watch a girl bathe or whatever, like, pfft, be my guest. I don't watch that shit myself. I've got a perfectly fucking awesome fiancé, as we've just been on about, right? Yeah. But to have <laughs> the, 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 this person, this tailor, come up in mine and Adam's recommended at the same time when neither one of us watch hot tub <laughs> pools and fucking beaches or whatever the fuck the uh, content yeah. uh, category is called is in my opinion fucking stupid Twitch <laughs> like actually well, give me recommended channels that are relatable to me I'm watching Apex at that point do I want a bunch of fucking other categories promoted in my record? No, I do not. I want other Apex people. <laughs> Fuck me. So, the, the thing with this, though, is, right, is that even in the screenshot you see, 8,061 viewers. 8,000 people sat there yeah. waiting for her to turn up. Right. <laughs> And this is remarkably similar to uh, what we'd see on uh, Fiend's stream. So you see, you know, like the moment he like goes be right back or wants us up to do something, yeah. more people turn up. Yeah, we. It's like the we we have this joke that he constantly get raided every time he fucking went brb. Yeah, yeah. So this is kind of like that, but in reverse. So people turn up. And they stay and they wait to see how long it takes until she turns up and does whatever she's doing in the hot tub. As soon as she does, the viewer base drops. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. If I was her, I just would never appear on the fucking camera. <laughs> No, <laughs> they just don't turn yeah. up. They just don't turn up. Or, or turn up for the last like two minutes going, all right, had a great stream, guys. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and then boom, you read, you read somebody. Fuck it. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? 
<laughs> why would you why would you uh, go ha huh, do you know what i sit at nine thousand people then i get on the camera and it goes down to six <laughs> yeah i'm gonna get on the camera more <laughs> No, I would like, all right, I'm literally going to get on the camera to say bye. <laughs> Fuck you lot. Give me ad revenue. That's literally what I'd be like in her position. I'm literally sitting there scot-free doing fuck all but talking. Are you kidding me? Yeah, go back to what you said before. Like the last sentence in this article is um, she may have fully mastered the art of baiting thousands of Twitch viewers all at once. And it's certainly working. And it is working. Because not only are people going and watching and waiting for her to turn up, but she's getting she's getting put in people's recommendeds. Mm. So something about the stream, something about the way she's running it, the way people are coming in and waiting. I I <laughs> must nice. be doing something right with which algorithm. Ronin, Ronin, just in a nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So one thing you could say is she's a um. The master mayor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to make that fucking yeah. joke. She, she, she is the best beta for master of them all. <laughs> oh my god! Right from that to IRL. Oh. IRL Twitch streamer has phone stolen during a live yeah. stream. I, I bet the police this found that this... quick. Surprisingly not. No. What? Um, how? No, no right, you've okay, so... Got, you've literally got a camera showing you where they are. Yeah. No, so it'll be reported nice and quick. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they know where the phone is at any given time. Mm. I mean, you can't, because if, if, if that picture is to be even half accurate, she could just go on her uh, iCloud account and go and find my iPhone. Yeah. But the no, point my, is, point, my point is, is if they don't know how to turn the stream off and they've stolen the fucking car like the phone, and they just walk around with it at some point, boom, we've got it. You know where it is. Sure. You just look at the fucking stream, find the monuments yeah. the and shit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So the the point with this article, and it's it's happened a couple of different times before. We had one of them um, who was like walking through an alley and had their phone stolen, and that one they did run off with it. Did she, that, that one did get a phone back. But as more and more people sort of get on the platform and, and, and we can start growing their audience and stuff and start doing things IRL, it's to consider that the more you lean into interacting with your chat, the more you have to be careful that you're not suddenly not paying attention to what's around you. Yeah. It's mad. Oh my god, I've just seen the fucking trending now on this article. <laughs> Unintentionally horrifying stray mod turns CJ, turns CJ from San Andreas into the cat from Stray. Oh god. Oh, okay, boy. moving on. Moving swiftly <laughs> on. Uh, Twitch streamers who average six viewers are in the top 21% of channels. That is yes. me. No, but that's 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 the thing is that that's that's saying one one take on this is that that's just how hard it is to find an audience, right? Is yeah. that the top twenty one percent of channels? That's like near enough the top fifth of all of the channels on Twitch. Yeah. In order to be in that sort of seemingly you know top tier. Well, not top tier, but high ish tier, like range, you only need six viewers. Damn. And you say, you say only six viewers. That's a lot. Definitely. You know, I mean, 80%, just shy of 80%, 79% of streams on Twitch don't reach that number. Including me. <laughs> yes, and me. Uh, a lot of the time. Mm, well, most, most of the time right now I'm on zero because I'm just not alive, but it's digress. Um, only the top 1% of Twitch channels average. 
Yeah, 26, 26 viewers. viewers. Or more. That's all it takes. What? 20, 26 or more viewers, that's all it takes to be in the top 1%. Uh, civics, if you, if you civics, if you see this or hear this, uh, most, of, <laughs> most of the time, my guy, you're in the top one percent. So stop calling yourself smaller. Fucking well, that's awesome, it, dude. It, it, it's, it's brilliant. But that's it. Is that even the even the self-labeled or labeled by others, regardless, <sighs> people who are considered or consider themselves small, like they can just say like. Less than thirty people is still relatively small if you're comparing yourself to numbers in thousands. But then if you compare yourself to the entire platform, the top one percent is pretty good. You know, yeah. that's up there. You I just find it, know, I do find it funny that there is actually a part of this column here. The um naught to five that seems to be purple. Like right at the top there, partners. <laughs> None of the affiliates are there. Like naught to five. I, That's bullshit. I'm um, there. But yeah. No, 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 there are some affiliates there. If you if I look real close, it looks like oh yeah, right at the, the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The affiliate is always below the partner, and then the non-affiliate and non-partners below that. So what looks like it's a little band of purple is just the weird blur at the top of the blue bar. But there is a sliver. There's a sliver of affiliate. Mm. And it's a logarithmic chart. So these the actual heights and scales of things aren't perfectly lined up. And you can see like each but each of the horizontal bars is like an extra um, scale. Yeah. I just find it funny that like It seems that there is a fucking... <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Um, but yeah. I like these kind of things, though, because it's like, alright, well... Let me tell you now, if you have fucking 20 viewers or more, you're in the top 20 fucking 1%. Yeah. If you have more than 26 viewers, you're in the top 1%. Shut your mouth. Yeah. Kind of thing. I mean, yeah, like... the, the interesting thing about this is that from the from some of the data was that of 15 million, over 15 million channels that have gone live in Twitch at least once in the previous year, 11.3% mm. were affiliate and only 0.3% were partnered. Oh, yeah, yeah. Less than half a percent of all of the channels that went live were partnered. Fucking crazy. Also the fucking discovery ability is just not there though. Like there's eleven point three percent that are like the next step up and are one step closer to being partnered aren't really able to like easily get themselves out there to get them in a position where they can do that. You know what I mean? They have to do yeah. other things like you know networking with other streamers that are like bigger or around the same size that just they know people aren't in it or get extremely lucky with something like a youtube video or a tiktok blowing up like ah <sighs> that's just ah uh, it's done anyway i'm moving on there uh, because we're i'm yeah. conscious of, of the time uh destiny solstice Yes. Uh, um, it's that time of year again. Solstice is live. Um, this year it's... they added Horrigin perks to weapons, so obviously they gave one to the Solstice gear. Yes, and, and it is it's broken, broken, as well now. broken as shit, apparently. Um, yeah, so do you know anything about That's about, about as far as I want to go with that, to be honest. Okay. Um, I'm basically just going to summarize it. Um, oh. If you get an assist with the uh, with the weapon that's got that trait on it, it will add ammo to it to sort of reload the weapon and can overload the mag. Oh my god. The issue No, no, right. Here's the really broken bit. It works on other weapons. So if you shoot something, right? Swap to another weapon, and then a teammate finishes them off. 
It will reload and overload the weapon you currently have out. That's why I've seen people saying, oh, just it's stupidly broken with Galahad. Yeah. It is, it is ridiculous. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this article, which is which of the old Destiny 1 raids are coming back next? Yeah. Personally, I would like to see Wrath of the Machine, but I think it's going to be no. King's Fall. I, I think it's going to be King's Fall as well. But that's based on sort of um, thematic reasons. It could be either of them. Yeah. A lot of people seem to want it to be Wrath of the Machine. Because that, I mean, that was trending a lot today all over Twitter. There was a brief period where King's Fall was take, was there. Um, and one of the things is that one of the weapons, the main exotics from um, Wrath of the Machine was what? Outbreak. Okay. Which we already have. Mm-hmm. Kind of. I mean, we do. So... If they were going to bring that one back now, what would be the reward? They'd have to come up with something new, right? If they bring back King's Fall, they can bring the back Touch of Malice. Yeah, but they're going to have to. They have to rework Touch of Malice because yeah. well, well, <laughs> yeah, yes. with Touch of Malice is that's fucking like it was busted enough as a Titan. With bubble, like it's gonna be even more busted with well because well fucking holy shit. Yeah, you're faster than it'll take. Yeah. So it would need a bit of a rework, but it's better than making. And they've already said they're not going to be expanding the Cosmodrome any further. So that's why. That's why I think it's gonna be um, King's Fall because thematically it makes sense. And you could yeah, have it, it to where hell, you could have it to where Crota's End comes back as well as King's Fall, but Crota's End is like the beginning of King's Fall or like a fucking dungeon of some kind. Like it's not a dungeon, but people I hate it when people actually do call it a dungeon because of oh, the it's, it's, that we have it's, it's dungeons like now. We, but yeah, but it's like when we had it um, in. Uh, Destiny 1, a lot of people, uh, like your guy included, they'd always call that a strike. Yeah. Because you could pretty, pretty reliably, I mean, you can't necessarily now, but you could reliably solo it. And it wouldn't yeah. take that long to do. One thing I really wish I'd actually gotten good at doing is, like, clearing that fucking yeah. bridge so I could have soloed it. <laughs> but... Yeah, I, I never got into that. <sighs> Destiny is already planning decades of de- Bungie is already planning decades of Destiny Two support after Light and Dark Saga. Um, yeah. So Light and Darkness kind of culminates with Final Shape, which is the last yeah. DLC we have on the roadmap. Yeah. And I'm gonna say one. I'm gonna post. I'm gonna say one thing on this. Good, so that people can <laughs> know. No, but I'm I'm saying like if they're already sh- saying look we're going to carry on with Destiny two after Final Shape, good because then people know that they don't need to like worry about you know a Destiny three um, oh, yeah. or anything like that. Like they don't need to worry about buying a whole new game kind of thing. And if they were to do oh. a Destiny three, it would be very wise of De- of Bungie to make it as small as possible whilst having all of the content from D1 and D2 together. Plus whatever they add in D2, D3, right? Because the simple yeah. fact of the matter being, there are people who joined Destiny on PC that have never played Destiny 1. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's probably why they're going ahead and doing the reprise raids. Yeah. But the other, th- the other thing is they well, need... Not to, exactly I, the I, same. Think, I think they need to remaster it. So yeah. here, here's what I would do if I was Bungie, right? I would remaster Destiny 1 and make it available for um, the new generation of consoles and PC. Because if you're yeah. on Xbox One and PS4, you can already play the old Destiny anyway, right? Yeah. Um, and also then Bungie don't have to worry about dulling down the graphics. Um, They can upscale it because it's just available on the new 
console. Um, yep. They could make the requirements for it similar to Destiny 2 with regards to like CPU and shit. Maybe uh, slightly better because of obviously how PCs have progressed over the couple of years that Destiny 2's been out. We're on like what, four or five now? Um, yeah. I mean, even, even, even if you go from when Destiny 1 released, it's nearly a decade. Yeah. Um, but that's. I'm on about like since Destiny's been on PC, so Destiny 2. Yeah. Um, then you have like a separate game that you don't have to pay for that has the Destiny, Destiny Content Vault stuff on there. And it's literally, you can pull from the Destiny fucking server like your character currently does for the actual game, right? But you just play the old content that's been vaulted. That, for me, would be fucking amazing. You have the Destiny 1 remastered, you have the content vault, and then uh, Destiny 2. And you could, like, smash all three out. People get bored and burnt out of Destiny 2, like I have. Then maybe they go back and try out Destiny 1. See what it looks like now. Or maybe they want to go and run uh, the Destiny 2, uh, like a vanilla story campaign, and kill Gaul remember the fucking excitement they had when they first did it like the nostalgia <laughs> right yeah hey, give people the option to do that also give people the option with regards to the reason i say make the fucking content vault a separate game and make it free is so that people who are just getting into destiny now that are buying your fucking dlcs and buying your seasons that have something to do with fucking goal and you've got fucking Hawthorne sat there going, uh, you know, uh, you've done a lot, ain't you? Blah, blah, blah. Killed Gaul. But, like, to these people that are just joining Destiny today, Gaul means fuck all to them. It means nothing. Yeah? Same with fucking the whole story with Aldrin uh, becoming the Crow. And the fact that, you know, people hated the Crow and now they love him. Right? Nobody really gives a damn if they don't know the story of Forsaken. Give people the option to play the fucking shit, even if it's a separate game. Like, it's just smart. It's just easy marketing, essentially, because then, let's say, right, for argument's sake, I know you, your brothers, both play Destiny and have played it, right? But let's say you were the only one that played it, Yokai decided to just get into it and whispers watching Yokai, right? <clears throat> and uh he goes, Oh, who's that who's that crow don? Yokai's like, oh I don't know. Yeah. Then you could turn around and go, oh, go and play this free version of Destiny that's got all the DLC that's been taken out of the game. It's because it's the Destiny content vault. Yeah. He's going to go and play, he's going to find out a story, he's going to be more interested in what happens with Crow going forward. Yeah? Then maybe Whisper's like, oh, well, it's free. I don't, I, I, I'm liking watching Yokai play this game. Let me go and try it out as well. And they've, boom, you've got two people that are already more invested in Destiny 2's fucking story, purely down to the fact that they've been able to go and play free content that you've removed from the game. That's just at the moment, that they're doing fuck all. Yeah. I don't get it. No. Right? But at the like same that, time, but... at the same time, right, there's people like me that are buying your fucking seasons and getting bored after the fucking first two weeks. And might be looking at this and going, oh, right, you're going to keep keep it going after the final shape no please let it fucking die do you know what i mean like there's going to be people out there just move on is essentially what they'll be saying like well uh, i will move on to our next topic as i say moving on to our next topic somebody that is moving on but within the same universe is apex and respawn the developers of apex 
who are also yeah. the developers of Titanfall. And why yeah. they didn't call this the Titanfall universe, considering Titanfall is based before Apex, I don't know, but... <laughs> I think it's probably because Apex is slightly bigger than Titanfall was. Yeah. Um, that, that would work. That, that would make sense. Um, and ev everyone's going to call it, every, every, every other article is going to call it the, in the Apex Legends universe because that's what it is called in the actual um, post. Yeah. Because, I mean, that is, that is what Respawn have called it. So, on yeah, so, when, so when Apex came out, they said, look, it's a battle royale set within the Titanfall universe with Titanfall weapons. Uh, blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. So this is why I'm saying it's interesting for me that um, Apex Legends universe is the one given rather than Titanfall. <clears throat> yeah, because when I first I saw this, here, I thought well, I just misquoted it. Titanfall came first, and much of Apex is influenced by it. Not influenced by it, it's made in the same fucking universe. The literal organizer of the Apex games is a 20 years later cube from Titanfall 2 Cuban Blisk, right? So this FPS that they're doing is basically Titanfall 3, but isn't Titanfall 3. Like, <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean? It, hence why they say here in the article, or it could be Titanfall 3 dressed up as something else to throw us off the scent. Please, please respawn. Be that five head. Actually say you're <laughs> making a Apex Legends story game and then make Titanfall 3. Please. Even if it's based after Apex Legends and the Legends somehow appear in the story campaign, that would be fucking amazing. But, yeah, I am looking forward to this because I, I constantly say uh, to anybody who um asks me oh like what game should i play like i'll ask like because they're looking for story game i'll say oh have you played titanfall 2 story and they'll go no i'll be like you need to i am not talking to you again until you've played it <laughs> and then they'll be like oh is it that good and, so, and i'll just sit there and they'll be like trep is it that good and then they'll just i'll just sit there and then they go, okay, you said you weren't going to talk to me until I played it, but is it that good? Tell me. And I'll be like, is it that fucking good? I just said to you, I'm not going to talk to you until you've played it. And then when you asked me two questions twice, I didn't talk to you. So what does that tell you? <laughs> they go, okay, I guess it's that good. I went, yes, it's that fucking good. Shut up. Go and play it. And they'll go and play it. And then they'll come back to me and they'll be like, Fucking hell trap, how did I not play this sooner? I was like, there, told you. Like, it's that good. There's people like me and Dune, and there's obviously other people that have done it as well, but they're, they're two people to know that have played the campaign again because they've bought the game again on PC. Like, me and Dune both played it on console. He played it on PS4, I played it on Xbox. Alright, so, and then we've both bought it like a year or two ago. When yeah, it was about a year ago when Apex started popping off properly, um, and Titanfall went on sale. Titanfall Two went on sale. We both bought it and fucking started playing it and like played through the campaign again. And then there's people mm -hmm. that haven't ever played Titanfall but heard it was good, but enjoyed D Apex like I think Civics did this, who then went on to play the campaign and was like, "This is fucking amazing. I wish we had a campaign in Apex." Like, point three. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> now you might, or you might not. It might be something else that's just disguised. I'm just, I just can't wait for uh, fucking, as it says here, Jedi S Survivor, which is Fallen mm -hmm. Order's announced sequel. Yeah. That's coming out next year. So, guess what? I'll be streaming it on my PC. Because I'll have my new one. I won't have to worry. I won't have to worry about fucking. Oh, can my PC run this? Because I'm running an old PC and this is a new game. I'll be like, I've got con. I've got fucking 
a GPU from the past four years and a CPU from the past two. Uh, yeah, I think I can fucking run this. <laughs> uh, anyway, security guide when streaming on Twitch. Now, this this isn't a set of hard fact rules. This is sort of some guidelines, things to consider. Like some of these, you look at it and go, "Well, why why would I do that? That's kind of going to break break immersion or ruin things." Or you look at it and go, "Well, I've seen other streamers not do this." Um, and it's it's basically just all sort of protective measures. So obviously, make sure your account protected. You know, a solid yeah. password, two FA, all the usual stuff. Don't click on link. Yeah. Uh, now I wouldn't say don't click on links in chat. Just be careful which ones you do click on. Make sure yeah. you vet them. Uh, I think I think uh, is it Frankface or one of one of yes. the Seven TV or something. If you hover over the link, it'll actually tell you what it is. Yeah, so it'll it'll tell you the page title and like the sort of basic description and stuff it wants provided. Yeah. Um, don't share personal information is a good one though. Um, yeah. So if you like, if you so... can avoid saying specifics about like where you live or like you know what's around you, things that someone could use like if they really wanted to could go okay I know he's in um, this town. See, and I do, I do, I don't follow this one myself, yeah. right? So even though I'm trep or intrepidus, like there's people who know me outside of like Twitch, YouTube, and whatever. Who I played with, like Pash, who yeah. know who know my first name, right? So they will call me by my first name. Mm. That I've, like, even though I know your first name, I'll still call you Kit, like, yeah, kind of thing. And like, um, that's out of that's out of force of habit. Do you know what I mean? He knows yeah. I'm like Pash knows. Oh, he's Trep, or everybody calls him Trep. Like even playing, yeah. I think I was playing with Pash and, uh. Co K Kirby one day, and Kirby was calling me Trap. Like, but every every time Pash was talking to me, he was like Tom, Tom, Tom. Like, I have no problem with that. To be honest, I couldn't care less. Right? For me, I'm not gonna share my last name. That's the key point for me. Yeah. So, and then know, regards to regards to like where I live, I think it's in my fucking bio that I live in Nottingham. Yeah. So. <laughs> kind of a given the fact is though for me nottingham is a pretty big city it's like top five top 10 in the uk of like 30 big like big cities so when I've you think just of... checked, it's actually not in your bio on here at least it? it's not on twitch it might be in on your twitter or something but I, it's I not on I, often, I, I often say it in it fucking people's chat enough, yeah I often say it either myself or in people's chats anyway, so... Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm the same with this all the time, in that, um, like, literally my sort of brief description on my stream is a barely scouts-bearded person. But anyone who knows the term scouts will be able to pin from the location. Yeah, exactly. They'll get, they'll get as far as the city, but, at least. So my point being is, like, I don't do this myself. But the but that's what I say. These are guidelines that you can you can like you can not share personal information, but still share little bits. You know things things that aren't going to be able to identify you or yeah. other people around you. And then this is um, the thing. At the same at the same time, though, it depends probably on who you are as well. Because I know yeah. for a fact, like the sidemen and so like key people within the sidemen, like um, Zerka, KSI, uh. Ethan, like they all know, like they've all said, "Oh, we live in London." They will actually go walking around London for like four videos. Um, Ethan said, "Look, my mom lives in Essex, because it's where he's from." And like you know, there's key key things that people have. They basically said, "Look, the this is where I'm from. This is where I live." Kind of thing. They don't give them their well, address, we, but no, obviously. But the thing with that is, you know, if they're saying, you know. I mean, Essex are in London. If they are outside and they're streaming or they're filming something for a YouTube video or whatever, yeah. And you go, they go past something that like a landmark or whatever, where you'll be able to easily look at it and go, "Oh, that's in London," or "Oh, that's clearly Essex." Yeah. 
they've got ahead of the game there. You know, you look at it no, and no, go, my, point, like, my point being, though, is uh, th- who they are, they're more likely to get fucking, you know, trolled to oh, yeah. um, a SWAT attack or whatever. But at the same time, because they're such, like, cool and, like, down to earth people individually anyway, they're not, like, over the top. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, they'll be walking around doing a video in London and a fan will see them spot like JJ or K- as his name KSI and they'll go up to him and be like oh yo what's going on like and he'll actually like stand there and talk to him have a conversation give him like let him take a picture or whatever like you know what I mean obviously not so much through like COVID and that but he's been a bit more careful but the point being is like they're actually down to earth and don't mind like talking if you come up to them and be respectful do you know what I mean and I think that's part of the problem with this kind of thing is if the fan themselves isn't being respectful then that's when you know you want to not share any of this fucking stuff because you yeah. could get end up in trouble and, so by, um, by sharing some of it you can sort of help build a rapport because you sort of like go okay well, i trust you with this information yeah. you know you sort of chat about things that go on in the air and whatever um but then you do have the flip side where like well if you're not careful about who you have in your community or who comes into your chat while you're talking about it then you do open yourself up to, to that vulnerability yeah. and they obviously they, they've been at this long enough they know the kind of people that are in their community they've managed to weed out some of the bad people and managed to sort of cultivate the, the fan base yeah exactly those sort of respectful people where like if you do see them out on the street or know where they are you sort of you go up and say hi but you won't like gate crash basically yeah half the time they appear in the videos because like ksi will be like yeah yeah uh shout out to what's your name and then they'll say their name and like yeah for you know coming up and being cool and then they walk off and he's like yo bye see ya that kind of thing as they walk off like like i said being respectful we understand look that jj is there or like side men are there to do a job they're doing their job which is making content, making a video. Um, he appreciates the love and support and the fact that they came over and talked to him. But at the same time, at, at a certain point, um, if he wanted to be a dickhead, he could just turn around to you and go, oi, fuck off, trying to make a video. Right. But he doesn't yeah. need to do that because people who do like see him and like, understand, you know what I mean? They're like, oh, okay, he's making a video, cool. Oh, actually, you know what? He, just said, one of the he that... just said, like, shout out to me in the in the video. So I'm probably going to be in the video. I'll look forward to seeing that. All right, later, JJ. Thanks for the, the autograph or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing is probably because of the approach that he's taken with that and, like, including them in the videos and stuff, is that anyone who's watched those videos has examples of how to act around them. Yeah. Uh, right, with that being said, I think we are done for this evening. Yeah, um, that looks like we're about time. I'm going to mute Twitch because I think we're going to go and raid a one Mr. CJ. And I just realized that I clicked this fucking thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, <clears throat> if you are watching on YouTube, Twitch as a um, VOD or listening on the uh, podcast platforms. That is the over and done with for you. Thank you very much for listening and watching. We'll see you on the next one, which will be in two weeks.